Hey, good morning, everybody. Jim Hoffman here. I am pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church in Midtown, Kansas City, Missouri. And it is Tuesday, and a little bit before noon, it is time for our daily devotion. So I am starting our Facebook Live event for our devotion time. I'll be your host and guide today, so I want to invite you to come and join me. As you do, if you would leave a quick comment to say hello this morning, I would appreciate you doing that. I will greet you as you do. And then I'll also announce what our scripture is for today. Uh, we'll be reading out of the upper room as we do each day, taking a moment to reflect upon it and pray. Hi, Stacy. Good morning to you. Good to see you. Just watching to see who all says hello. A few of you here so far. Again, leave quick comments. Hi, Jack. Good morning to you. Glad you are with me. Our reading today is going to be out of 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 14 to 17. Hi, Linda. Good morning to you. If you are watching this a little bit later on today, please leave a comment as well. That way we know you stopped by. Second Corinthians chapter 2, verses 14 to 17 is our Bible reading. I think we'll go ahead and get started. So let's begin with our opening prayer. O oh God, by your spoken word, you created everything that is. By your incarnate word, you redeemed us. By your comforting word, you are with us still. Prepare us now to hear your word to us this day. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 14 to the end of the chapter reads, but thanks be to God, who always leads us in triumphal procession in Christ, and through us spreads everywhere the fragrance of the knowledge of Him. For we are to God the aroma of Christ among those who are being saved and those who are perishing. To the one we are the smell of death, to the other the fragrance of life. And who is equal to such a task? Unlike so many, we do not peddle the word of God for profit. On the contrary, in Christ we speak before God with sincerity, like men sent from God. Our devotion writer today is Robert Racine. Robert is from North Carolina. His focus verse is Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. It says, Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly, as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And here is Robert's devotion that he writes for today. He says, Not being blessed with natural music ability, I found it difficult and frustrating to learn new songs with the praise team at my church every week. Five years ago, I never heard any of these songs and did not understand the reason for worship. 
nor did I realize that many of the songs were actually based upon Bible verses and, or older hymns. At first, performing each week made me anxious and uncomfortable. But then the Holy Spirit taught me that it is the heart of worship that counts, and the message of the song rather than its delivery. Once I stopped focusing on performing perfectly, I realized that music offered as a labor of love and worship is beautiful and pleasing to God. The purpose of playing music and singing is to praise and worship God. The psalmist says, I will praise God's name in song and glorify him with thanksgiving. We worship aloud to acknowledge our, God, our love for God, not to perform or seek admiration uh, for um, admiration for ourselves. The voices and sounds that fill every church around the world are pleasing to God, especially when our hearts and minds are open to the truth and the power of scripture contained in these songs. So the thought for the day is, I will sing boldly with a faithful heart as an offering to God. So um, nine years ago, um, uh, when I was appointed to St. John's. Well, a little over nine years ago when the appointment process began, uh, most of you know that at the time I was serving at North Star Church, which is in the Liberty area. Um, and before that, I spent five years on staff at Lee Summit. And my primary responsibilities um, for that 10 year stretch of time was to serve with a, a predominantly new or younger community of people who also enjoyed what was called modern or contemporary worship services. And so at, at um, Lee Summit, while I was there, our worship arts director um, at the time was a lady by the name of Lori Webster. Her, um, her charge was to create an alternative service to traditional worship where we had choir and handbells and sometimes orchestra pieces and things like that. She was to create something that would be uh, an alternative to that. And so we had a lot of people that, that were energized by that. They joined kind of like a little praise team or praise choir and they would sing on Sundays. And we had people who were musically inclined that played in it. And it was kind of an ensemble that just grew and grew and grew. And, and more and more people learned different things and picked up new instruments and tried new things and, and all of that. And then I moved to North Star where they had already launched as a completely uh, contemporary kind of church and and their band was evolving and developing there as well had one band member lead because he wanted everything to be played exactly the way it was heard on the radio when it came to these contemporary songs and and you can't really emulate all of that all the time and can't do it completely perfectly that away you know kind of thing it's just you know and then um my name comes up in cabinet nine plus years ago um, to replace Kyle when Kyle returned here, uh, retired here at St. John's. And uh, a friend of mine uh, that on the cabinet at the time was a guy by the name of Fred Least. And Fred looked at the members of the cabinet and the bishop and says, you do know you're asking Jim to go to something that's 180 degrees the opposite of what he's been at for the last 10 years, right? <laughs> And then you add in some other time where Margaret and I, I mean, the service that we went to at Aldersgate was their blended contemporary service. So it goes back even further than that, right? And, and, and sure as the world, we come here, the traditional music here, our choir, all that Dale is able to accomplish with them uh, is uh, inspiring in many, many ways. Uh, we recently had a visit from our district superintendent, David Gilmore, and he was blown away by the fact that eight voices blended together could could produce that kind of quality of music for worship on a Sunday morning. Uh, it's not his genre, but but boy, he was he was thoroughly impressed. And and so you think about that. We all like our preferences, right? We all have our biases. We all have the things that that we think are the the only true way in some ways. And, and because of that, we get kind of locked into this vision that one is authentic worship and the other is not. 
you may not understand the purpose behind contemporary worship music. And, and I certainly appreciate that. And I understand that. For those that do appreciate it, it, um, it is almost um, a Gregorian chant style of music. You may be repeating the same thing, but there's, a, there's an element by which the Spirit can move through that for certain folk. And it draws them into worship, just like singing old hymns and listening to wonderful choral music um, does for those of us that, that reside here at St. John's and love the worship here at St. John's. I think what we have to do is just make allowances for. We've got to make allowances for uh, each other. We've got to make allowances for those around us. And rather than Rather than us proclaiming ours is the best and the only and the true, we have to figure out how to say that there are unique and vast ways in which we can worship God. Psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. Notice that the writer lists three different ways at least in which one could sing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Psalms, hymns, songs from the Spirit, right? So let's think about the ways in which we encourage others to engage in this practice of singing praise to God versus us saying, you know what, I can't stand that or I can't stand this. Because if we do that in public, we're putting down the church universal. And I'm not sure that's exactly a healthy thing for us to do because honestly, there's enough going on in the world around us that's trying to figure out how to minimize the church. We don't need to help that along in any way whatsoever. So let's think about how we can be positive and we can be encouraging and we can be open and vibrant people who may have our bias towards one thing and we appreciate that and we, that's the way in which we worship. It might be the hymns for us, while it might be the spiritual songs sung in the Spirit for others. And let's just encourage people. Let's encourage one another to practice this. Let's encourage one another to dwell richly in the message of Christ and to admonish one another to worship God. And I think in that, we will also embrace and encourage one another and we will find that the church universal will be healthier because of that. So let's take a moment to pause and pray. O oh, gracious God, we ask that you make us instruments of your love and your peace through song. Focus our minds, soften our hearts. Open our eyes and our ears to the truth of your word. And we pray this in Christ. Amen. All right, friends, well, thank you so much for joining me today for our devotion time. I am so glad that you were here. Don't forget, we'll be on for tomorrow's devotion time as well on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We'll be here each day, so I want to encourage you to come and join us. Again, if you watch this a little bit later on, don't forget to leave a quick comment and say hello. Uh, by the way, hi, Shirley, and hi, Marcella. Glad that you made it today. If you want to, feel free to also post this on your own timeline, your own Facebook page, uh, as a share, and we would appreciate you doing that. Otherwise, I hope you enjoy the rest of your Tuesday, and may God dwell in you richly, and may you sing praises to Him the rest of today. Thanks, friends. See you soon.